Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in just a little bit here. I'm just doing a pan of the ceramic studio here at Touchstone. We're getting towards the end of the summer and our interns are cranking out their last bit of work this week. We're going to have a wood firing kiln going this weekend. We're going to load that on Friday and start firing Friday night and go until Monday. And then also check out our website. We're having an open house on September 26th. And online we're going to have a ton of awesome um, demos and different talks. We're also going to have a live update of the unload of the wood firing kiln. So stay tuned on that as well. Tonight we have our last intern demo with Julia here in the ceramic studio. Julia, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're demoing tonight? Hello everyone, I'm Julia Castor. I'm a ceramic artist and fine art painter from Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and I'm currently an intern here at Touchstone Center for Crafts. Tonight I am going to be throwing for you all, I'm going to be throwing a small serving bowl with a split rim that I like to do and alter, and then I'm going to take you over to my underglaze station and I'm going to do some painting on a platter so you can see how I make some of my designs. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. What kind of clay are you working with? So I'm working with a um, high fire porcelain clay. It's an English porcelain. I love the buttery consistency that it brings. Really soft and white when fired. How long have you been wheel throwing? I have been, I started wheel throwing, I think when I was around 16. I started teaching myself in the back room of a painting studio <laughs> on a wheel I got from Craigslist. And I was hooked and have been ever since, haven't stopped. Just doing a little wheel wedging here. see me looking up in front of me it's because I have a little mirror up here that I use just gives me another perspective on the piece I'm working on helps me to see the silhouette I'm just making a nice curved bottom because this is a bowl Start to bring it up. currently pulling up and out at the same time while leaving a pretty thick rim because I'm going to split it. I'm just going to pan over here so they can see a split rim. Sure.
going to take one of these mud tool yellow ribs and I'm just going to smooth the outside while also shaping it. What's your favorite form to throw? I really love to make like bottle forms um, because of the, I like to make the surface really smooth and uniform and then I love to think of my pieces as canvases. So a bottle form has a lot of potential for decorating, a lot of surface to cover. But I do love to make beautifully functional things like teapots and casserole dishes, things like that. I'm just going to bring this out for you one more time. my rim. I use just a piece of paper towel that I fold in half. It just gives me a smoother surface to separate. Now I have found that this needle tool is really bad. It's way too thick to be used as a needle tool, but the back of it has this lovely point and I use it to split my rim. So you have to make sure your pot is very centered to do that, right? Yes. If you don't have a centered pot, it's going to just rip the rim. And then I usually take just a nice soft brush, usually a round brush, and I just go down in there and smooth it all out. And the last step to this process is to once again Take the needle tool, take the back of the needle tool, and just press in. I do that usually in three places. And that's where I start from. next step with this piece would be to trim it. I might throw a foot onto it or I might trim one and then I would emphasize that flower shape maybe with some handles or maybe with a surface decoration. Very cool. Here's some other pieces that Julia's thrown recently bunch of lidded jars waiting to be finished and a little teapot, some vases. Awesome. What's next on the agenda today? Okay. Going over to the needle now. So this is just a little platter I made with handles and a split rim. You can see how it finishes up. Usually if I have something in here, I'll smooth it all out and make it nice and uniform. And what I've done in the middle is I've taken an X-Acto knife 
like this one here, and I etch into the clay, making little lines in the clay, and then I take a um, drop or dropper bottle, squeeze bottle, and I run slip through those lines. And what that does is when I go in with a rib or I compress the surface of the pot, the underglaze will stay in those lines and then I can take a sponge and rub the excess off and it will stay in the lines and leave the clay clean. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the same dropper bottle and I'm going to um, underglaze I'm going to basically paint with it on the piece. So I sometimes I draw out a little diagram of what I'm going to do, just a, a concept idea. This is a, a plant I've been loving to work with recently on the surface of my pieces. Magnolia trees are very dear to me. I have a lot of fond memories of them. So I have been enjoying putting them on my work. I'm just going to use this like a paintbrush. First, I have to unclog it. This is just a little metal. And you're also a painter, right? I am, yes. I'm mostly doing acrylics right now. I love doing portraits and still lifes mostly, but I do do landscapes as well. Since being at Touchstone and being in the beautiful surroundings that we have here, I've been doing a lot of botanical studies of various wildlife that I'm finding around plants and animals. It's just so inspiring. Okay. Last year, we actually had a botanical illustration workshop here. Oh, wow. And that was really great. Oh, that's wonderful. Who with? Um, Robin Menard. Mm. She also teaches at Phipps Conservatory. Nice. And this is just black underglaze? Yes, this is just black underglaze. I use Amico, or not Amico, sorry, I used to use Amico. I use Coyote underglazes now. Um, I like the concentration of the pigments. They're very strong and they tend to be a little thicker too, which I like. Do you usually do illustrations in your book before putting them on a pot? Oftentimes, um, more often than not, I will draw the pot itself and the illustrated um, line drawing on the piece um, just so I can get a feel of how it'll fit. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes I have a picture, usually on my computer, with me. Um, a couple pictures of what I'm after, photographs of the plant or tree or whatever it is, flower, that I'm interested in. But sometimes I just go off of a line drawing.
I like the strength of the lines you can get with a dropper, although it is harder to use than a brush because you have to control your pressure. You can't over squeeze or under squeeze and you have to get used to learning how to do that. But it's very, it creates these lovely juicy lines when you are able to do it. Do you go in with other colors on top? I do. So I'm going to show you that. Although these are still wet, I will try to do a little bit of that before we finish up. Um, yes, I, I do complete color on all my work. Usually I'd wait for this to dry though, but we don't have Doing the last details. Julia's going to have her work for sale at Touchstone's Open House, which is online now this year, and it's going to be on September 26th. It's a Saturday, so stay tuned for um, the post on when that online gallery store opens. Okay. Normally I would go over and do a little bit on this side, but I will start painting this now um, so you can all see how that So I have a lovely like country green here. I'm just gonna start by going in on some of the leaves. Often in my work I go for a watercolory effect, so I may not paint the entire element that I'm currently working on. Um, just leave a little bit of the ends unpainted because I love that kind of painterly watercolory effect that it brings. If anyone has questions, please post them in the comments and I'll forward them on to Julia. slightly darker green and just use it as an accent. Last but not least on the leaves, we're going to do a little bit of dark brown just around the base.
because this is all still wet, you're not able to see quite the detail that I'm getting, but it'll come through in the kiln. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the flowers. I'm using this really pretty red orange, starting with that. I'm going to make these magnolia flowers pink. Have you been inspired by any of the flowers around here? Yes, I have. I, I have to say more so with the leaves around here. Mm -hmm. The tulip poplars and the rhododendrons. Yeah. They're just so beautiful. And all of the catbriar. I love catbriar. And there's a lot around here. What's your favorite part of the process? Oh, that's a good question. I, I think since being here, actually, I have realized that I really do love to decorate. Um, I love the painting part on the pieces and figuring out something that really works with the shape of the piece and the flow that the piece has. So like, I think that this has such a nice arch to it with the arches that you see in the piece that I've created along with the handles. And I also um, I have a lot of Asian kind of influences to my work, Japanese inspired from um, ceramic history. So I like to kind of bring that out subtly. really been enjoying decorating my pieces, bringing it all together. This is just a nice orange. Do you have a studio at home? I do. I do have a studio. And I'm in there every day. <laughs> as often as I possibly can be. I also have an online shop if any of you are interested. <laughs> Let's take a peek at that link. this yellow orange just for the center of the flower. Just gonna pop that out. And I'm just gonna take a slightly wet brush and fan out some of these edges. And that creates the more watercolor effect? Yeah. Do you have a favorite brush you like to use? This is, a, I love to use round brushes. Whenever possible, I'm almost always using round brushes, but this is just, I believe, this is just a Princeton round number two. I've been using this one for a little while. 
it's more the thickness of the round that I look for as opposed to the type of hair or the company. Now I'm going to take my dropper again. Now that this is starting to get a little bit dry, sometimes I go on the outside of the leaves and just do kind of a silhouette of the leaf itself, just for an added element of interest. And I'll just do the vein that goes down the middle of the leaf. And I don't usually do it on everyone, just so it doesn't become monotonous. Just keeps it interesting. And now I'm going to do the same with a couple of petals. And to finish up, I usually put just a few dots here and there. Just kind of like ink spots. If this was an actual painting. And usually I would do another little piece over here and add some more underglaze to the bottom and some finishing touches. Great, thank you so much. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Can we take a peek at the large pot you have back here? Yes. <laughs> so this is a piece that I core built on a wheel. And then I underglazed it, painted it with rhododendrons and various butterflies and birds that I have seen around Touchstone. And this piece is going to go into our soda kiln that we have here. Such a large piece. And you, how did you make this? Was it on the wheel? Yes. So if you follow me over here, I have another smaller one started on this wheel. Um, so what I do is I take, this is a sculpture body. This is a high temperature sculpture body of clay. And what I do is I take, um, they look like sausages, they're about this long, pieces of clay, and I pinch them in rings. And I do three rings at a time, because that's about how much it can handle. Um, and then I compress the rings together using the wheel, so I actually am essentially throwing those rings together. And then I'll let that sit up and I'll do the next three rings. All the time I'm shaping the piece into what I want and this piece is going to be a little jar so it's I'm aiming for it to be about this high and then I'm just gonna have a bowl. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for showing your process. This My was great. Pleasure. Thank you. And we're gonna take a peek at her Instagram as well as her Etsy shop so you can check that on online. We also have a touchstone open house that's going to be online this year and it's going to have a bunch of awesome demonstrations and all sorts of fun stuff so you should check that out on September 26th and there's also going to be an online gallery um, all the work is going to be for sale so check that out as well Julia will have more work on there all right thank you guys so much for tuning in have a good night